We're going to talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis, probably the closest that the United States and the Soviet Union actually got to direct confrontation, a hot war between the two superpowers of the Cold War. Uh, this will be a um, time of um, crisis, as in the name, uh, but more importantly, it also becomes the realization that um, the escalation of the Cold War between these two nations would and could end up in a nuclear war, and that neither leader really wanted that or was ready to do that. And so let's dive in. It, it really starts with Fidel Castro um, leading a revolution in Cuba. Uh, che Guevara was uh, helping him out there. Uh, he takes over. He brings communism to Cuba, takes over many of the businesses, including U.S. businesses, especially in sugar. The United States and President Eisenhower doesn't like that, so they put an embargo on, um, on Cuba, which we carried into the 2000s. Uh, and so we get this embargo. And so... Fidel Castro is going to turn to the Soviet Union for economic and military support uh, because of this embargo. And so they're going to really rely on the Soviet Union. And they're, they're going to rely on the Soviet Union until the Soviet Union's collapse in 1991. But the big thing is, because of this, uh, we now, if you look at this picture, have a communist country 90 miles away from our borders. This is going to scare us very much. Well, remember, we talk about our policy of containment. President Eisenhower, before this, uh, had brought in the idea of the domino theory, one country falling, all the others fall with the Korean War. And it should be mentioned that at this time, Joseph Stalin has died. He died in, I believe, 54 from a stroke. We get this leader down at the bottom left named Khrushchev, who comes in, who is not Stalin, but yet we're at Cold War, and that will dictate the policy. In the United States, uh, we've elected JFK, the first Catholic president, uh, and he takes an, a different approach than Eisenhower did. And so we get two different leaders in power, but both fighting this Cold War. And so... With this, tensions will begin to rise in 1961 when JFK will uh, have uh, an invasion or a CIA um, operation uh, where you took Cuban exiles, the CIA trained them, and they were going to uh, lead a revolution in Cuba to oust Fidel Castro. However, it is a big L, Fortnite, big dance, big L, okay, and we need to know that. JFK doesn't give these these men um, air support. Uh, they're basically stranded. Uh, Fidel Castro easily defeats them, and it's going to do a couple things. It's going to show uh, Fidel Castro and Khrushchev that uh, they need to be able to protect Cuba. It's also going to show Khrushchev that the United States might, because of this failure, might not push back too hard if the Soviet Union tries to have a more aggressive approach in the Caribbean and Latin America. He is going to agree with Fidel Castro to start building nuclear missile sites. Now, one thing, the Soviet Union was uh, very scared uh, as the United States had nuclear weapons in Italy and Turkey at this time pointed at the Soviet Union. And this Khrushchev thought that having missiles in Cuba would give him some leverage. And Fidel Castro likes the idea because it will protect him against another um, Bay of Pigs or an invasion by the United States. And the United States will see this. A U-2 spy plane will go over. This is a picture and, and we'll discover these missile sites. It was supposed to be hush-hush. We find out. Uh, it is going to go to the president. The president is going to come out to the public. And, and so this is what we'll be worried about, is that medium range, intermediate range, uh, it could attack a majority of the United States, especially along the East Coast. And so people uh, will run to the stores, buy supplies, uh, nuclear war is coming, and so it's really going to put people on edge. With that... JFK's response, and he has some, um, 
He has some options here, obviously. He can attack Cuba. Uh, but what he'll do is he'll, he'll get a, a quarantine or a blockade around Cuba and says that uh, no Soviet ships with any basically arms or military provisions will be able to go uh, into Cuba. Now, he uses the word quarantine because blockade would be kind of an act of aggression or act of war. And so we don't want to go to war with the Soviet Union. However, it now becomes, as we set up this blockade, what if a Soviet Union ship tries to run it, meaning run past into Cuba? Would the United States answer with military action? Would the Soviet Union answer with military action? And who would be the first to use those nuclear weapons against each other? All the while, the Cuba is continuing, and so with Soviet Union help, to build their missile sites. And they're going to be very close to operational. Some people say they were already operational. And so this is as close, and it will be 13 days of this high tension. We'll actually go to DEVCON 2, which is basically uh, U.S. bombers in the air, nonstop, being ready for war at that minute. Okay, and so the country is on edge. And you would say maybe much like today with COVID-19, times that by 100, because these are going to be nuclear weapons. And so... Soviet ships will come close. There's a story about one tanker who uh, obviously uh, the United States didn't feel like they had um, weapons on them and, and let that tanker through. They stopped some other ships from other countries. Uh, but the ships that we thought did not come. And by this time, Khrushchev on the left and Kennedy are able to work out an agreement. Khrushchev actually sends two letters. The first says, hey, We'll remove our missiles if you promise not to invade Cuba. The second says, and we want you to remove your missiles from Turkey. JFK pretends he didn't get the letter, the second letter, but then secretly agrees to remove his missiles from Turkey after these 13 days. So we'll never invade Cuba and we will not, or we will take our missiles from Turkey quietly as long as you don't put missiles in Cuba. The United States will obviously win this. It'll look like we win because Khrushchev will take his missiles out and all we have to do is say we're not going to invade Cuba. Uh, no one really knows about us taking our missiles out of Turkey, which is um, quiet. It was secret. And so Khrushchev kind of looks bad. But what we realize is that we came very, very, very close to using nuclear weapons. And so what will happen is a couple things. We'll get a direct hotline, meaning a phone line. And we think about this as, as crazy but uh, nowadays, but at this time it wasn't. And so you'll get a direct hotline between Washington, D.C. and Moscow to be able to talk through these things. Okay, it's going to kind of thaw the ice with that. You're also going to get some treaties signed related to nuclear weapons. However... Both will continue to invest in nuclear weapons, as now we're really going to get Star Wars, as Reagan would say, with our Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs. Okay, Basically, can we have missiles go from our country all the way to the Soviet Union instead of having to have these middle countries in the way? And so we get this, but it will kind of release some tension. That and the Vietnam War, which we'll talk about when we get back and after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Have a wonderful evening.